Abracadabra, says the conjurer, and on the instant, quite impossible things happen. He waves a wand and objects vanish, come to life and are set in motion. A perfect master of this art in bygone days was Monsieur Georges Méliès. He stepped down from the platform, took off his top hat, and substituted the film camera for the magic wand. In a century of technical wonders and unlimited human possibilities, in this grimy 19th century, beneath the touch of his imagination, he worked such wonders on the celluloid screen that they gained him immortality. Karel Zeman, Melius's successor and heir. Animated drawings and figures long ago laid their spell on him, and he is still a captive in the kingdom of make-believe. That kingdom is the little studio in Gottwaldau. From here, he launched the submarine of Captain Nemo on voyages which we've all made on the pages of the adventure books of our childhood. every mystery, this kingdom of lifeless things seems mute, unreal, and strange, until Zeman brings it to life on the screen. Yes, just cast your mind back. These are all films, past and present. Many years ago, Karel Zeman conjured up a friend. He called him Prokop, and with him took up arms against bogies, dragons, and the red tape that is the bane of honest people, not in fairy tales, but in real life. Zeman long ago mastered the trick with horses, the trick of making the horse go. Here is the formula. It is actually the ABC of movement in an animated film. You see that movement is made up of phases, just as words are made up of letters. But art begins where movement turns a puppet into an actor. A simple movement may be enough, a step perhaps. This is the nonchalant way Mr. Prokok strides along. Piero has a somewhat melancholy gait. And cheerful Ollie doesn't walk, he hops and skips. As Zeman went on conjuring, he discovered that between the world of human beings and the world of film magic and witchcraft, there is a surprisingly close connection, that it is possible to speak from one world to the other. And so, that's what he began to do, without ever repeating himself. Once he brought to life the world of Persian miniatures in the fragile naivete and color harmonies of the Arabian Nights. Another time he breathed and the drops of dew froze and over the mirror-smooth plain, transparent horses galloped 
bearing to the ends of the world tidings of the Czech magician and his wonder-working spell. Zeman's imagination feeds on variety. On its wings we may fly from the world of glass beads to the land of giants and have holiday adventures among prehistoric lizards. like to know how it's done? It is very simple. One conjuring trick. Keep it in mind that in much the same way, even though the effect is very different, it is done elsewhere. Distances, proportions change, the lifeless comes to life, the incredible becomes reality.
beginning, of course, is always an idea. Nothing more than an idea. And then, quick, pencil to paper. The horses leap across the ravine. The pursuers are catching up. The excitement of the chase grows. The tension builds up to the breaking point. You don't believe it? Look. scenery, adventurous romance. Only, in real life, it always works out differently. And this is what the rascally gangsters look like in reality, with their chief. They are plotting further pursuit, and plans must be carefully laid. <laughs> The plans for chasing the fugitives have got a bit mixed up. But in the end, he got them all in order again, and the hunt is on in new colors, in Zeman-esque style. And in all the excitement, they forgot they must stop when they come to the edge of the world. The force that drives into the stars is imagination, and that's what I like. That's a poet's verdict on Zeman. How true it is. Karel Zeman is not only a wizard, he is one of the brotherhood of poets. Eternally young, with a heart aflame. Which is why he and Cyrano get on so well together. And now, I throw my plumes to meet the stars. <laughs>